Hey everybody, it's Dan once again, the Get School Dude, here to talk to you about interactive rebase options. Uh, I've done a video on rebase before, I highly recommend watching that. Actually one or two, one on interactive rebase for squashing and then another one on rebase in general. Anyway, I highly recommend you check those out before looking at this, because this might be confusing to you if you don't have that uh, base knowledge. Okay, so today we're going to be working in the Hello Repo. It's in all my videos. Basically, you don't really have to know what's going on. It's a C++ project to just print some stuff to the screen. Um, if we look at git log, or I'm sorry, we're going to use this GT alias today, which basically shows git log in a more succinct graph view, so we can see our history. Now, I've gone ahead and made a couple branches for this, and uh, two branches at the same place, rebase example, which is the branch we're currently on, and then rebase example or ridge, which is just a marker on where we started, because at the end of this I'm going to show you what the branch was before and what the branch is at the end. Okay, so um, to do an interactive rebase, you may recall that you type git rebase-i for interactive, and then in the case of rebasing linear commits, which is what we're going to do today, meaning each commit has one parent, you basically give it how many commits back you want to rebase, or essentially rewrite. Um, so we hit this, and what comes up is the git rebase to do, which is simply a text file that we can edit, that we tell git how we want to rebase. This is the interactive part right here in this file. So when we write this file, the orders the instructions on what to do with each commit will be executed. So the things you gotta keep in mind here is this is a little bit confusing at first. What you're seeing is the oldest commits of the eight that I picked at the top. Oldest at the top, newest at the bottom. Which is kind of backwards when you think of most git log commands for example, the newest are at the top. So that's one thing that confuses people right off the bat, so just keep that in mind. Um, and what that means is, and you can see each one of these, what these commands do, and we're going to do uh, one of each of these today. So let's just go ahead and pick, we're going to say reword on this commit. Uh, we're going to edit the commit under that. We'll pick these two, we'll squash this one, and then we will fix up this one. I'm going to show you what happens with each one of these, but I just want to point out while we're in this view, and I will actually make a screenshot and keep this up in the corner so that, because this is basically the roadmap of this entire video of what we're going to be doing, just so that you have it as a reference because things get confusing once we get mid rebase. But the point is when you squash or fix up in this case, fix up is like squash, but it throws away the commit message. Things squash upward. So this commit will be picked, meaning we keep it as part of the rebase. This commit is fixed up into this commit, meaning it's squashed into this commit. In the case of fix up, it's going to discard the commit message entirely. So in the same vein, this commit will be squashed into this commit. But with squash, it will let us, it will give us both commit messages and let us edit the final single commit message, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. When I write the file, I tell git those are the instructions. Then when I quit the file, it's actually going to execute. So if you recall, the first commit we got was picked, so it simply used it. The second commit we told it to reword, uh, which is R, and it's giving us the opportunity here to change the commit message. So in a normal example you'd write something that makes more sense but we're just gonna mark it with this so that when we see it later we know that this commit message is not the original that we've changed it so I go ahead and write the commit It's going to continue the rebase process when I close the editor okay per our roadmap we are now editing commit 8ff156b which the commit message wrote uh, originally said remove box 1 so if I just look at git log, you can see that git has put us in a state 
where the commit has been made. Remember, this is the one we just edited, right? So we're on the next one. The commit exists, but it now gives us an opportunity to edit both the commit message and more importantly, the content of the commit itself. So if we want to see the content of the commit, we can easily do that using git diff tool. And what we will see when we do this is probably exactly what is described in the commit message, which is remove box one. So on the left is the older commit, on the right is what the current commit that we are rebasing says the content will become, but this gives us a chance to actually edit this. So in this example, I'm gonna, instead of removing box one from the code, we're going to comment it out. And I'm gonna show you why we're doing that later, but just uh, bear with me on this example for right now. So I move this content over, let's comment it out so that it's not used write the file and close it. Now, you'll notice that our git status, we have hello.cpp here because we just made modifications. We are currently editing a commit, editing a commit while rebasing a branch. It gives you all these options on what you need to do. Essentially, the bottom line is we need to git add our changes and then git commit amend, which will make our changes be absorbed into the commit there and give us the opportunity to rewrite the commit message itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of remove, we'll say comment it out, write the file. Uh, we finished writing the commit. Now remember, we are currently editing, uh, so we are, we are currently rebasing. So if you type git status, it's not gonna continue rebasing by itself. You have to tell it to do that. So before we do that though, you'll see that if we look at git log, now we have a different commit with a brand new message, still one commit above the edited one we, uh, we were working on previously in the rebase. So now if we git rebase continue, we'll continue our rebase process. Now what we're hitting next is the squash that we ordered it to do um, of, so we're squashing F104 into 54BAB and because we're using squash it gives us both original commit messages and lets us edit it into the final single commit message so I'm just going to join these together and continue and as soon as you finish rewording a commit in a squash or in a reword the rebase continues automatically, so we don't have to, for example, tell it to continue. It's just sort of one of these git-isms to have to know when you need to do that. <laughs> but as you can see, it says successfully rebased and updated um, on our branch. Let's take a look at our uh, git log using our GT alias here. Now we're looking at our, our current rebased branch that we had just rewritten, or we had interactively rebased across eight commits in our previous call. Now, if you recall in our roadmap, we told Git to fix up the top commit, uh, the newest commit, the one that said, in addition to a useful message. And you'll notice that, that that's not here at the top, which makes sense because we told it to fix up into the commit above it on that roadmap, which was ECA with the message refs 100. So, you may be confused, what, why is that commit not here? Well, that's because we told it to fix up, which is basically a squash with no editing of the commit. So that's what we're seeing here is um, the bottom most two commits on our roadmap became this commit. Also notice that comparing our roadmap to where we are here, that the two commits that said these two things are now a single commit here and we see the edited commit message that we made here. One last thing that we should also point out is remember we edited a commit. In our roadmap we edited 8FF15, remove box one, and in our previous history that meant removing those lines, but if we look at the file now we see that they are in fact commented out, not removed. So we actually changed what that commit did as part of our interactive rebase. So let's go ahead and compare this current branch that we just rebased to the original branch before the rebase.
you can see that we have two fewer commits in our rebased version of the branch than the original version of the branch, which makes sense because we had a squash and a fix up. One last thing to point out here is it's usually good practice to only rewrite commits that are local, that are not shared with someone else. So in this case, if this were a real workflow, I'd probably want to delete this branch or at the very least not push it to any remote so that no one else has it. The reason for that being, if someone merges with a pre-rebase state, um, you can get duplicate history. And I won't get into details into that uh, for this video because I want to show something else that's pretty cool about this mechanism. So let's totally undo this. And we're going to do that by... We're just going to reset the branch to the orig state. Okay, so we with one command here, we basically completely undid that entire interactive rebase. And you can see that by looking at git log now, and we're at the same location. If that confused you, check out my uh, git reset uh, videos. And... Okay, the last thing I want to show is the one command we skipped. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we did earlier. I'm going to set up our roadmap the same way our to-do list, so to speak, squash, fix up. So this is the exact same to-do list we had before. But if you notice down here, there's one more command that we haven't used yet called exec. Now this is kind of cool. This lets you execute arbitrary script options in between these steps. Why would you want to do that, you may ask? Well, in the case of changing commits, rewriting them, squashing them, or editing them, you technically are losing any assurance that your commits are stable and usually what that means in a C++ project is that the project builds and runs. So what you can do here is you can add a command that will be executed as part of this roadmap anywhere you want. So for example we could say we want to make sure the project builds here and here or you could do it after every step but we're gonna show just one example here and we're picking to run it after this edit because in this example we actually change the source code as part of the edit of the commit so let's go ahead and run through what we did again hopefully a little bit faster this time okay so our first edit from before now we have got to the edit stage where we wanted to use the diff tool to get the context diff here so that instead of removing box one we actually comment it out and let's go over here comment it out write the file okay now remember we have to add it to the index and then git commit amend and we change the message to say we commented it out now we've committed the change when I get rebase continue because our roadmap we added the exec function the next thing it should do is test that the project builds and it does check it out it executes the make clean and the make and I purposefully screwed up and we see that this commit does not build so this is a pretty cool way to actually catch issues that you may introduce by editing commits or changing them of course the assumption is that the commits all build in the first place which is usually good common practice but not always the case but what this lets us do is mid rebase discover that we've introduced a problem and then fix that problem so let's go fix it. Forgot to get this one, and that's why it wouldn't build. Okay, so now we go through our process where we add the change. We get commit amend. We can use the same commit message, and then we can get rebase continue. This is the change before where we squash two together. Let's just blow through that, and we have successfully rebased and updated. So I just wanted to point out how that exec function can actually catch errors during your interactive rebase, uh, which is pretty cool. I actually just learned that, so I figured I'd mention it in this video. And um, yeah, so that's it for today. Uh, usually I summarize 
what I went over today, but because the roadmap is difficult, I'll just put that in the top right corner so you can see what we did. But to start an interactive rebase, you use the dash I switch, and then you give it head tilde num, let's be clear, linear commits that you want to edit. The reason I say linear commits is because it gets a little more complicated when you try to rebase across history that has merge points in it. We're not going to get into that into this video. My name's Dan the Get School Dude. I hope you learned something. I'll see you guys next time.